Now this is a hangout. We've got folks all over the world here for uh, the U.S. Africa Business Forum. It's being held in the Mandarin Oriental Hotel here in Washington, D.C. But at the Bloomberg News, uh, Bloomberg Philanthropies Google Hangout, we've got folks uh, joining us from everywhere right here on set. Uh, Funke Opeke, who is the CEO of Main One Cable, uh, based in Nigeria. Uh, and uh, we're going to be having a discussion about technology and media, joining us remotely. We have uh, Angelica Harry, uh, who's Youth for Technology, uh, who's involved with Youth for Technology, also in Nigeria. She's uh, joining us from Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, we've got Abella Akobi joining us from Washington, D.C. You'll be able to see her in the background. Uh, she's with Yahoo Africa. And then as well, Bright Simmons, uh, an entrepreneur from Ghana, uh, joining us. And you'll be able to see him with the, uh, the flag and the colors behind him. Uh, we're going to have a conversation here about technology uh, and media in Africa, and particularly uh, uh, commu communication. Um, I think I want to talk some about uh, sort of basic communication. We'll start with uh, Funke. Uh, talk to me a little bit about where communication technology is right now, and how, much, uh, how much people have access uh, to communications, and what your company's trying to do to uh, bring access to more people. Um, I'd say over the past decade, telecommunications has improved significantly in Africa with liberalization and the entry of new operators into the mobile space. So the explosion in teledensity across the continent from probably less than 1% to close to 70% today is largely driven by mobile. Um, I would believe in most parts of the continent service is available to citizens within a 30-minute um, commute time or perhaps a one-hour radius if it's not immediately available in the communities. So the dynamic has changed significantly and communications by mobile is contributing a larger portion of GDP across the, the continent. Um, the, the next wave that is just starting, um, and that main one, for example, is a part of, is building up the digital infrastructure and making the move to have people online um, connected uh, with the internet and the digital economy, so to speak. If you look across the continent, access, um, Casual access in some markets approaches 30 or 40 percent. People who are able to access the internet via their mobile phones um, or other devices, um, access in the home or to individuals on a consistent basis is much lower, um, less than 10 percent. And that is a, an area of opportunity for continued investment and growth that is now starting to take off in Africa. Bright Simmons, can I ask you? Uh, a little bit about your entrepreneurship in Ghana and uh, sort of what you see as the future, how long will it take to get folks uh, communicating uh, as effectively and efficiently as, as you'd like, and also uh, a little bit about, uh, if you can talk a little bit about how young folks in, uh, in uh, Ghana and other places in Africa communicate uh, most easily, I'd appreciate that. So we operate out of about 12 countries in Africa and India, and recently also in North Africa. And the primary thing we do is enable consumers, when they buy products, to use their mobile phone to determine if that product is genuine or a knockoff. So we are an anti-knockoff technology company, and we use um, widely used for medicines in particular, but also from other products like cosmetics. Um, and the reason that we do this is because we have so many products out there that sometimes look like the real thing, but are actually knock off. And in the case of medicines, they can actually harm people. As some uh, Funky has already mentioned, the massive growth in internet access and obviously mobile access is beginning to have an impact on GDP. So in countries like Kenya, the contribution of internet to the, uh, to, to the GDP, that's the economic output, is already higher than countries like Canada. Senegal is actually higher than India, uh, it's higher than Germany and France. So this is no longer a matter of the future. It's about now. That is the most fundamental point to take note of. It's about the now. Already, the internet and mobile technologies are transforming societies in Africa in categories like education, health, and the rest of it. As far as young people are concerned, 
Yes, people have talked about political activism, but I think the most fundamental expression that we are seeing is self-expression. People that are using technology to participate in the creative sector, etc. Bella, uh, tell me what you've seen uh, dealing with Yahoo Africa uh, in terms of uh, what the infrastructure is like and how folks communicate uh, across the African continent, where you think uh, the next areas of uh, growth are in terms of digital uh, communication and infrastructure. Sure. So as part of the policy team um, at Yahoo, focused, I actually focus more, more on human rights. And as part of that, we join an organization called Alliance for an Affordable Internet because we recognize that there is an issue related to access. I think we all, all Funke, Bright, have all talked about the issues related to access. And one of the things that we've realized and one of the things we're working on as part of the alliance is to look at there are specific policy issues in different countries that make access a problem. So people think classically about electricity being an issue, and that is an issue, but I think that there are actually very real, um, there are very real ways to address the access issue by looking at specific regulations um, and, and loosening up that some of those regu regulations and writing different legislation can make access more of a reality um, across Africa. And that's what we have been focused on. Um, I will also say that um, that focusing on specific technology is also of interest. So, so how are ways that differences in technology? So, for example, um, as people are creating products or platforms, they're often only creating for a, a Western market, or they're only creating for a market where broadband access is considered um, uh, is is at a certain level. And one of the things that I think companies can and should be looking at is how to create, um, how to co-create along with people in across Africa. So, how to create products with the particular um, difficulties and challenges across um, developing markets in mind. And I think that, that looking at both policy and technological um, uh, fixes will help bring us to, to a different level in terms of what's available across Africa. Okay, you were talking uh, earlier before we went on about partnerships. Um, it sounds like uh, what Abella is talking about, at, at least uh, on the edges, is the idea that uh, you can partner a, a Western company with an African company that has a better understanding of the rules of the road. Uh, what do you think about that? Is that something that is necessary in terms of uh, advancing uh, technology in Africa? Um, clearly, I, I think, um, would result in tremendous leapfrogging. I mean, there's no sense reinventing some of the base technologies. In fact, the opportunity does not exist um, to reinvent at that level unless you're trying to re leapfrog and bring some other newer applications or modifications to, to what's being done. So yes, there is indeed, uh, with building out the digital infrastructure, the opportunity for American companies help African countries or economies leapfrog in that sense by access to technology, access to skills and know-how um, to deploy those technologies and then start building on top of those technologies the applications uh, that are most beneficial to Africans. Jenica, I wanted to ask you about the way in which uh, young Africans, uh, particularly in Nigeria uh, where Youth for Africa is based, but I wanted to ask you uh, how young Africans consume information uh, where they get their news from, where they get their, how they communicate with each other. Are they using, uh, are they using Facebook? Are they using Google Hangouts? Hopefully, uh, what's the what's the mode of communication? Absolutely, it, it's everywhere, right? And this is the concept of ubiquitous connectivity, and we have seen over the last decade, in particular, really an explosive proliferation of applications that are enabling users to go about their daily routines with new ways of knowing, perceiving, and even interacting with, uh, with the physical world using technology. So the technology of the mobile internet is booming, of course. You know, Africa boasts of uh, close to 700 million mobile subscribers, and that number is constantly increasing. Uh, some economists question whether or not technology can still deliver the kind of wide range, profound impact like the automobile or even the semiconductor units did. But if you really think about it, you know, in 1975, for instance, the price of a supercomputer was somewhere around $5 million for um, what is today an iPhone 4 that's about $400. So the cost of this technology is coming down very, very much, very significantly. And I'm of the preface that, you know, really to understand the future, you have to look back into history. 
you look back over the last 2,000 years of human history, one measure of human welfare is gross domestic product per capita. And it's not perfect, but it's a reasonable estimate. And one will see that the, if the period of growth rate has been relatively flat. But what's interesting is that if you look over the same time period, you begin to see the advancements in technology, and you begin to see how these advancements have helped to accelerate GDP. So back in the time of whether, you know, the printing press, you see an increase in human welfare and an improvement in GDP per, cap per capita. But in recent times, if you look at whether it's the steam engine, mass production of steel, uh, electricity, the internet, what you see is really a noticeable increase, uh, almost like a hockey stick in, in gross domestic product per capita, and an increase in human welfare. So this is really remarkable. We truly believe that it's, it's a casual relationship, and this acceleration of technology is causing a dem demonstrable uh, increase in human welfare. At Youth for Technology Foundation, in all honesty, we, we believe that access to technology is a basic human right. It should be accessible and affordable by all. Um, some of the newer technologies, such as 3D printing, have uh, an opportunity to increase revenue by about 500 billion by 2025. So there's a huge opportunity there where young people in Africa can take designed models and actually create physical products um, for commercialization or just to further the education. So that's a huge opportunity um, that you know we at Youth for Technology Foundation continue to look at, and we see young people in Africa in particular with that interest. Right, Simmons, you, uh, I think you've heard uh, both Angelica and uh, Evola say that, uh, say that access is a human right. Uh, what do you think about that? Is that among the, the human rights that you think of uh, first or most important in terms of uh, that, that broad category? So in a number of African countries nowadays, there is um, a huge campaign to uh, promote what is called freedom of information legislation. These are information types that enable people to be able to hold their governments accountable. So to the extent that political accountability, whether in the United States or in Ghana, is considered some kind of a human right, I believe that internet access, given that this type of access is critical nowadays to access information in the right form in order to be able to hold governments to account, etc., is critical. Given that it's critical, I would say that it is indeed a human right. But more than that, you have to also realize that a lot of other welfare functions that have already been mentioned, whether it's in health, whether it's in education or agriculture, are now increasingly dependent on these types of technologies in order to deliver outcomes. So if we want to ensure that people have the right access to healthcare, right access to education, right access to agriculture, certainly they're going to require access to ICTs and access to technology is going to be quite critical going forward in ensuring that people have the right welfare outcomes. Bright Simmons, Jedica Harry, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Evelo Okobi, and um, and uh, Funke Opeke, thank you all for joining us on the Google hang Hangout. Uh, we'll be back here in a minute from Bloomberg Philanthropies and Google uh, at the U.S. African Business uh, Development Forum, and uh, we'll be back.